This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, it's Alex, and it's the Ramble. Here we go one more time from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, the man with the hat. <laughs> oh, I love that hat. It looks great on you. Thanks. What is that? This is Stephen Kravitz, by the way, as you can see on the screen down there. It says it. Okay. Um, uh, 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 what kind of hat is that again? I asked. It's a pork pie. That's a pork pie. Okay. Right. Does it have a little ridge in the top at all? Let me see here. No, I guess it's flat on top. Yeah, I guess that is pork pie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where did you get that? I bought it online. Online. Right. And how much was it? $65. Wow, that's an expensive hat. Yeah, no kidding. You know, this thing was free. Right, 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 right. People send me caps all the time, so. Do they really? Hmm. Well, this guy has a company that actually makes uh, testing devices for COVID. Uh, uh, What's it called? Uh, Cephide. Hmm. Makes a great cap. Oh, yeah. I got another one. It's white. Really nice. Yeah. Oh, it just sits here caps. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so anyway, the last time we were talking, we were talking about uh, what we were Oh, we were talking about the United States not being culturally adroit. Right. This Right, according to the people in Europe. Well, this, this town is a cultural sewer, you know. Uh, What's that, New York? Yeah. No, no, no. New York isn't a cultural sewer. It's very cultural, but the rest of the country is a cultural ghetto. I mean, it just, there's no culture anywhere. Right. Well, what do you right, got? Right. What, do you, what do you got? You know, you got people missing a tooth, no no, no offense intended. Right. Uh, missing teeth and, and, and playing banjos and <laughs> having no culture whatsoever and no uh, idea of what culture is. Does that make sense? Yeah, it actually it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And As we just an, an, an alienated uh, three quarters of the country. I don't give a crap. Nobody watches this thing anyway. You know, so Is that right? Why, why not alienate the rest of them? Now, I, I, I think it's a cultural uh, problem here. There's no culture here. You know? No. Uh, you go to another country and they're very steeped in their culture. Well, they go back centuries upon centuries. That... For, for starters, and 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 they just seem to admire the arts and culture, and so right. maybe I'll leave England out of that because I think England's kind of not as cultural as a lot of the other countries. I mean, you go to France and you're just so steeped in culture you can't oh, believe yeah. it. You know? And the other thing is, in France they respect their elders. You see a lot of old people walking with their their like grandchildren or or well, teenagers. Oh, uh, uh, England too. I mean, most of the European countries are very good to their seniors. You know? Right. I mean, you don't have to worry about anything when you get older. You're not going to have to worry about being homeless or anything like that. There's always a, something that's out there saying, "Well, come come deal with us. We'll help you." you right. Know? Uh, and and the, the attitude about older people is that you did your part for this country. Now it's our it's our time to take care of you. It's a very it's what children do for their parents. Right, you know? very much so in Europe. Yeah, and the children don't have to do it because it's taken care of by the state. Right, which is a great way to prioritize your money. Okay, I mean. Uh, if you're going to spend money on stuff, what a better thing to spend money on than your old people. You right, know, right. The people who have been around and they've paid the taxes and they've worked the jobs and they've made the country hopefully what it is, you know. I just, right. I just, I, I, I think. I had a part in it anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you've been to, you know, the other problem is you've been to Europe. 
Yes. You've lived in France. Right, for two years. In fact, he was a very hated thing in France. He was a mime. Oh, no, no, what was it called? You didn't... No, I, 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 I had studied physical theater. Physical theater. Still the same thing as a mime. Anyway. Uh... No, it isn't. <laughs> How does it differ? You can talk. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. But the Marx Brothers are physical theater. The Three Stooges are physical theater. Not good physical theater, but... The no, but still physical theater. Yeah. They're the buffoons. Oh, I see. Okay, so you, you basically... I'm trying to think of the equivalent here in the United States because we've never heard about physical theater over here. Okay. Keaton Chaplin. Keaton Chaplin, yeah, but they didn't call themselves physical theater. They just were. No, they were just comedians. They were whatever they were, you know. Right. I don't think they, I don't think, a lot of people have never come up with a definition of, uh, for instance, as an example, uh, um, Buster Keaton. Right, Buster Keaton, Harold Lloyd. Yeah, they've never come up with, a, a, oh, silent film star, silent right. film comedian. But there, there's never a comedy uh, t a title that you could put on what they did, you know, and and they were brilliant. I mean, they were. I mean, I, I was never a big Chaplin fan, but I know his. Right. I understand his brilliance. Right. Okay. Right. Right. And I understand what he did. You know, he, actually, Chaplin wasn't the. F he was influenced by somebody. And it was a guy in, I believe, France, and I'm trying to remember his name now, because uh, I saw some stuff by him the other day. And he was, in fact, Chaplin even admitted that he was very influenced by this guy who came before him. So, hmm. you, you know, you'd have to almost think of this guy as one of the genesis of what you saw in, in right. film. But it was funny, the Chaplin was very famous okay and he played the little tramp and he did a certain kind of thing it's interesting that nobody who came after him and was successful tried to imitate that they tried to come up with their own thing right right now, you right. can't you can't compare buster keaton who is my favorite be, beyond okay. a shadow of a doubt you can't compare keaton to chaplin there was no comparison right. they didn't do the same thing right you know uh, the comedy was completely different. The, the takes, uh, you know. And then you had Harold Lloyd, who was completely different from either of those. Where Absolutely. They, where they wore kind of costumes and they, you know, uh, what's his name, McKeaton had the hat, you know, right. and things like that. Right. Uh, uh, Chaplin had the cane and the baggy pants. Uh, Lloyd was dressed to the nines as, an adult, right. as a normal average human being Right. Somehow, then winds up hanging from a clock. Right. You know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So these guys all were different. Today, everybody's trying to imitate somebody else. You know. Uh, and not every. Not everybody. Not everybody, but a great deal of people. You know. Right. He's the next so and so. He's the next this. Everybody has to be the next something, don't they? Right. You know. I had people who said to me, uh, "Oh, everybody always used to say when I saw when there was a new comedian coming up, oh, he's the next Lenny Bruce." Right. That was that was the thing you you held up as the icon, was right. Lenny Bruce. And I had seen Lenny Bruce, and I was a fan of Lenny Bruce, and I owned all his comedy records, and I would look at these people and go, "Have you ever listened to Lenny Bruce?" Right. You know, right. What do you mean? This guy is the next Lenny Bruce. You know. I mean, um, and and so like, like Sam Kinison came on. They went, "Oh, he's the next Lenny Bruce." I went, "No, he's not." No. He's not even doing what Lenny Bruce did. Right. And then somebody came along that I said was the next Lenny Bruce. Who is that? Bill Hicks. Oh yeah. Bill, Bill Hicks. Hicks was special. Now, people are going, who's Bill Hicks? Well, who's Bill Hicks is he's dead. He died at 32 of pancreatic cancer. That's right. And he was, when I first heard him, I said, this is it. Because his attitude, the direction he was coming from, 
the kind of things he based his material on, which was outrage, very much Lenny Bruce. Right. And, right. And it's I when he died, I I literally felt really bad because he was so good. Right. And you know that you you've seen him perform. Right. I worked with him. You probably middled for him or something, you know. Yeah. Um, you'd have to middle for him because you wouldn't want to follow him. Right. You know? And everybody goes, well, who's Bill Hicks? Well, I always say, go to YouTube, type in the name words Bill Hicks, and start watching. By the time right. you're through, you're going to be a Bill Hicks fan. You know. Oh, yeah. So. If you're a comedy fan, you'll be a Bill Hicks fan. No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But getting back to America and culture, uh, I often felt it was a, this country's a cultural sewer for the most part. You know, for the most part. You know, it's hard to say it living in New York because we have the theater, we have the Metropolitan Opera, we have the you know, this and we have the that, and we have jazz clubs and we have music clubs and all. We have all of that. So to say it's, it's a cultural sewer here, no. But go to New Jersey and it is. Yeah. You know. The, the, the Garden State. Yeah. I mean, anything outside of New York is not cultural. Uh, uh, and uh, many times I, I often wondered, you know, I was brought up in California, so I, I never knew New York until my mother brought me here when I was a kid, but I barely remember it. Right. Okay. But she was, uh, uh, it, it, this town uh, is pretty, uh, pretty good when it comes to culture. Right. San Francisco, you know, what did we get? We got the road shows of all the great musicals, you know. Right. Nobody ever, Same thing with Boston. The only time a musical ever started in San Francisco was Peter Pan with Mary Martin. They actually Is did, that right? They actually wrote it and did it out of town first in San Francisco and then moved it to Broadway. Uh, but outside of that, I can't remember anything that opened up first in San Francisco. Well, there's there's shows that open up in Boston and then move to to New York. Well, that's your out of town tryouts. Right. Yeah, uh, I think Peter Pan was actually created in San Francisco for for San Francisco. And oh, is that there. right? Yeah, and then it did so well. They said, "Hey, bring it to Broadway," and they brought it to Broadway. Hmm. Yeah. Whereas in the case of, uh, of all those other shows like Boston, I think Philadelphia is another town where they do it, is they, they, it's out of town tryouts. And a lot, of, a lot of plays and musicals, by the way, die in those out of town tryouts. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, the, people say it's not working. Right, only the cream of, of the crop end up in New York. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, and even here in New York, you know what's getting terrible in New York? What's that? Is you go to Broadway and everything there is, we, what we call them our bridge and tunnel shows. In other words, they're created for the bridge and tunnel crowd, the people who come over from New Jersey or are, are traveling to New York on vacation who want to see a show. So you have things like, uh, what was that thing about the Four Seasons, uh, Jersey Boy? All right. Very big. But nobody in New York City wanted to go see it. Right, right, <laughs> you know? right, 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 right. And that was a bridge and tunnel show. They did something on Carol King that I went to see, which is, I thought it was abysmal. Uh, and and uh, uh, that's a bridge and tunnel show. In other words, something with familiar people, about familiar people. You know, this is a show about the Four Seasons. Oh, I love to see that. I love the Four Seasons, you know. And then the whole show is an original music. It's like all the songs they sang, done right. by a bunch of people who didn't do them. So, yeah. Who are they doing? A show? The Temptations are doing a one now. I think, I think they did it and it's gone. The Tina Turner right. thing, I think, is gone. Uh, that kind of died fast. Uh, some of these shows die fast, others last forever. The Carol King thing went on for like 10 years. They're doing well with Neil Diamond now. Yeah, they are. And you know, they never say, hey, we're doing a thing on Carol King. Why don't we go get Carol King? Right. <laughs> you know, no, they go get an actress to play Carol King, and she sings all of Carol King's songs. And I'm going, you know, why should I be here in a theater when I can stay home and just put on a, a CD? You know, and, right. and listen to the same stuff. So this is what we call bridge and tunnel shows. 
they're for the yutzes that come in from out of town and you know they want they want to appeal to that crowd right 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 but uh, we're going what next week though to see company uh which is stephen sondheim you know what's that about it's just it's a music another one of sondheim's musicals but it's supposed to be very good i can't remember what it's about in particular and i'm glad i don't because now i can be surprised by it uh but uh you know i mean there, there were some people who did great shows people like sondheim right but believe it or not they didn't have as much success as say jersey boys you know I mean, Jersey Boys, I think, is still running in smaller cities. I think it it's closing finally here in New York. I think it's on its 80th cast, you know. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, but uh, you know, I mean, I mean, am I going to complain about it? No, people are getting work, you know. Right. Uh, but uh, but when you compare that to a Sondheim, you know, Sondheim was did brilliant stuff, just brilliant stuff. And Marjorie was thinking, because she buys these tickets for her girlfriends who come to town once a year, and they all go to a Broadway show. So she right. was looking around for a Broadway show, and they said, well, let's go see Company. And they thought, shall we go see Company? Shouldn't we go to see Company? They then waited too long because Sondheim died. And the day oh, he really? died, the, the ticket price doubled. Oh, I'm sure. So we're going to a very expensive Broadway show next week, uh, and it's it's company, uh, and I'll let you know how it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. please do. Uh, but I I just you know I mean, uh, is Wicked still playing there? I think Wicked's still here. Yeah. I know it's in Boston. That's another bridge and tunnel show. Right. You know. Maybe not so much so when it started off, but when it became very popular, you know, everybody goes, "Oh, it's a Wizard of Oz." You know. Right from the from the witch's perspective, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's about the it's about the two sisters. Right. Right. Uh, I guess I've never seen it, uh, but I mean, uh, it's and it's supposed to be a pretty good show, all things considered. I think if I went to see it, I'd go, "Oh, why are we going to go see Wicked?" And then after it was over, I'd say, "Hey." That wasn't that bad. That was all right. That was all right, you know. Uh, I mean, it, it, a show doesn't last that long. Well, I don't know. The shows that lasted that long that suck, yeah. So, cats, cats, that sucks. You know. Is that still playing? Is it still? I don't think so. No, but um, finally. You know, well, I always hated what's his name, the guy that did cats. I always thought he was terrible. No, I can't even remember his name. I'll remember it in a minute. But uh, what I wanted to do was go to see Cats, and then on the way out, go, this sucked. And when somebody says, why did it suck? I said, those weren't cats. Those were people. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I would, you know, <laughs> what was it that Paul Newman in the first episode of Letterman when he did went to CBS stands up in the middle of the audience, and he says, hey, is this the singing, I, there are no singing cats here. And they say, no, that's across the street. And he said, oh, I got the wrong, I got, I got in the wrong theater and he got up and walked out. Who was that, Paul Newman? Yeah, that was his cameo. Yeah, oh, where are the singing cats? <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, but, uh, so I always used to have a joke about it. You know, like I went to see cats and you know, guess what, they got people being the cats you know I thought it was going to be I love cats I wanted to see real cats perform you know but it, it's it's kind of a terrible show I think well that's that's a show I have no interest in ever no, seeing no no here we're talking about theater folks and most of you people don't give a good goddamn. you know right if it's not on Netflix it doesn't exist y yeah yeah you're right you're right uh, so uh, anyway, so when are we going to do your Netflix special? You ought to do it, you know. Well, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I take the tape over to Netflix, and I go, "Who's he?" Right. You know. And I said, "Well, I I had to do it with my GoPro, but it's it's pretty good." You know? Right. But uh, uh, you know, it, I get it's just rough for older comics now. It really is. I hate to keep bemoaning this thing. 
But, you know, when I talk to Slayton, I understand how bad it is. I mean, do you feel the ageism? Oh, absolutely. So if you were younger and you walked in there, they'd pay attention to you, is what you're saying? Absolutely. Huh. Absolutely. Because we're older, they feel we don't have a finger on the pulse of what's going on. Well, you know, my argument has always been that funny is funny. Right. Funny, Period. Funny doesn't change. You make somebody laugh, that's the job. If they don't what laugh, about? if they don't laugh, you didn't do your job. Right. You know? And Mom's Mabelie was funny when she was older. Yeah, but you know, we in the old days, we actually respected age in performers. Right. You know, we uh, George Burns. How old was he when he was still doing stand up? He was in his oh, yeah. late 90s. Okay? Uh, you know, and um, with the thing they don't understand and the thing we don't value in this country is that with age, okay, with age, uh, you you get the you get your chops. You really have become a virtuoso. You know, right? Like as somebody said to me, boy, when I when he was twenty five, I said Eric Clapton's a great guitarist. They said, yeah, but I'd like to hear him when he's forty. You know, and of course, Clapton got better and better and better. So you know, uh, it, what's the big deal? Right. You know, I, I, uh, um, uh, it, 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 a guy like you. How many years have you gone up on a stage and done comedy? Forever. Right. Yeah. Since '81. Yeah. You, you do. You probably do it better than than a guy who's 20. Oh yeah. You know, how good were you when you were 20 or 25? You know. Right. You were still learning. Well, I was, I was drunk. Well, yeah, but you were also still learning. Right. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and so, I mean, that goes on and on. And, and you, you go, well, you know, the older a person is, maybe the better their chops are. And right. uh, uh, quite frankly, I think that some of the older comics that I see are at the, at the peak of their powers. The only problem is they have no place to do it. Right. And that's the problem, you know. Right. Um, I mean, uh, so I mean, I feel sorry for any comic who's over the age of twenty-five. You know, everybody goes, "Oh, what a wonderful comic he is!" You know, I, I, I just saw somebody. He's fifty-three, actually, is doing quite well. Bill Burr. Right. Yeah, but he's also very good. You know, and he's been around for a while. But he's been around for a while. That's for sure. But when did he, he just do a new Netflix uh, special? I, I'm sure he did. He's doing them all the time. Right, but you know, I, I still, <clears throat> I have to, uh, I have to say that when he reaches seventy, he's going to find it harder to find venues. Right. I mean, do you? How much do you see Lewis Black these days? Oh, hardly at all. Yeah, and and I think that's because of age, not because he isn't one of the funniest men alive. Right. You know? Right. So I, I, you know. It, 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 we do not revere what age does. What age does is it brings you virtuosity. I can't say right now I'm at the peak of my powers because I'm not doing a daily radio show. Right. And But I listened to myself back at Sirius in my last years, and I was as good as I ever was at that point. You know? So uh, we really should respect age and performers and not lock them out. But these clubs go now, you know. Plus, when they hire a younger comic, they don't have to pay him as much. That's, right. That's their other. Thing. That, that's that's a big part of it too. Yeah. Uh, and and here I asked I asked Bubbles he, because he said, I played the punchline a couple of weeks ago or something like that, and I said, "How much did they pay you?" And I didn't ask him that. I asked him, "How much are they paying you these days?" And he says the same price that I was getting 20 years ago. Right, 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 right. In other words, it hasn't gone up. They've just right. kept it at a certain level and not moved from that level. You know, I Because I was asking him, what does a middle act pay, I think is what it was, which he is. And, and he said, well, you know, the opener gets 50 a show, and the middle act gets 100, and the, you know, the, the, the headliner gets whatever he can get. Right, a couple of thousand maybe uh, a week, uh, and and uh, he said, "I'm not. I'm making the same money today 
for being a middle act that I made at that same club 20 years ago. I believe it. Well, I believe it. Not a great business to be in. The last time I played Yuck Yucks up in Canada, I was getting the same pay that I got when I went up there in 87. And it's still called Yuck Yucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only other one that had a worse name was Uncle Funny's Chuckle Hut. I oh, really? That. Yeah. Yeah. Where was that? That was in Florida. Never heard of it. <laughs> Uncle Funny's. Yeah. Anyway, hey. Another great time with uh, with uh, Stephen Kravitz. I I appreciate it, Steve. Thanks, Alex. I love doing it. Steve Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. He's playing uh, at the VFW. <laughs> Bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes. Ah, there's, uh, there's Steve. I love Steve, as you know. I always say that. But I'm serious about it, folks. I'm serious about it. Anyway, um, let me see here. i got to bring myself down a little bit. You don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, let me see here. Uh, ba -ba and then we'll probably get... Uh, here, here we go. Let me, uh, let me bring it uh, down a little bit here. Where are we going? Oh, that's up. And that's down. There we go. I think we're... I yeah, will take it down one more. There we go. Okay, I think that's fine. All right. Uh, hello, hello. How are you? How you doing? Are you okay? All right. So I got this new computer, and uh, I wish I could say it was wonderful, but so far I have no idea. I can't get the goddamn thing to work for me. I can get it to work, but I can't. I want to load in all the stuff that's on the machine that I have now and then have it run like look and look like this machine on screen and it doesn't yet so well I have to wait and see okay we'll wait and see over the weekend I'm probably gonna take this computer out and put the other one in and see what I can do to to make it work okay so that's uh, that we'll try that and then if I can't get it all together again then we'll know that uh, Wednesday there'll be no show at all. Okay. But I've got until Wednesday to get everything working. All right? Okay. Anyway, why am I, why, why am I uh, so uh, 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 off here? I'm kind of like a little bit of... Uh, it looks a little bit like I'm uh, um, out of sync. But that hasn't happened in a long time. So anyway, uh, I guess we're ready to go here. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, okay. Let me uh, uh, bring in some people, and I'm 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 woozy tonight. I really am. I really am. I'm I'm I've been woozy a lot lately, and maybe it's just boredom. Just maybe plain old fashioned boredom. All right. But anyway, here's his my friends uh, that start me out. Uh, Jeff is always here. Alan's here, and of course Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. How are you? Good. How you doing? Yeah, fine. Uh, did you did you hear that? <clears throat> did you hear the uh, the uh, uh, did you hear the January sixth show yesterday? Did you watch it? I did see it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I was disappointed they didn't have a theme song. You know. Yeah, uh, that would have been a nice touch. Yeah. You know, little theme song. But anyway, uh, uh, what did you think? Um, you know, I didn't uh, particularly like the moving it to nighttime sort of deal. I mean, I don't really think that was necessary. Um, however, all that aside, um, the substance of it was was you know very good. I mean, I thought. You know, in the opening there, it was just a <clears throat> a little bit, you know, the, the chairman and everything. I, I don't think they needed to talk as long as he did and some stuff like that. But, like I said, nitpicking, you know, here and there. But, I mean, the substance that, you know, they had is uh, obviously pretty good, um, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, that's what happened. I mean, those are the facts there are pretty clear. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the evidence is large. 
Um, so, subs, you know, as far as substance, they did a, a very good job because they have a lot to work with. Um, I don't know that I care for the way that it'll be rolled out, you know, but uh, aside from that, I think, okay. Well, you think maybe there's a little bit of a problem here of too, too many people thinking they're beating up on Trump as opposed to making a case. A little bit. You know, I mean, I, I mean, not. That I think I'm, that, um, you know, look. I think Trump has a, a large, uh, a, a large responsibility, but I think that they would just probably be better served if they would just sort of lay it out more so the way Liz Cheney did than the chairman, and just let people <clears> make that what I would consider to be a, a likely conclusion on their own rather than trying to steer you toward that conclusion. Um, so it has a bit of a prosecutorial bend to it where the prosecutor is almost trying to sway the jury, but I don't think in this case, you know, that's not really what this is. This is a hearing. Mm -hmm. So a hearing should be designed to present information to the American people. So uh, I think it's a little bit over the, you know, the center line of the, of the road in that uh, regard. Yeah. But, but I mean, uh, I'm, look, I mean, you know, Trump bears responsibility. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, going to act like it's, you know, completely crazy. I mean, I think a few of the things that they've done, I don't particularly care for as a matter of my preference, but I'm not saying that it's, uh, you know, completely out of control. Um, you know, I thought uh, Congresswoman Cheney did a, a, you know, a good job. She just said, here's what we have, you know. I mean, I, I think that approach would be good, you know, well served. So hopefully that's how it continues when yeah. they get to some of the other people and all that kind of stuff, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I don't know. I I just felt that it was a little. You know, I'm I'm trying to think about what the uh, the people we have to convince would think of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who aren't exactly convinced that he did anything wrong. Right. And what what you have to do to make them be convinced? Because it's obvious he did do stuff that was wrong. I think I can you name another president of the United States who tried to overthrow the government? <laughs> I mean, come on. No. Fox didn't no, I mean, look, he, uh, he definitely should not have been engaged in any of that. Um, you know, for sure. Uh, he certainly, you know, did. I mean, he did what I thought that he would do. He didn't want to give up and leave. Um, and a lot of this, you know, sort of going back and trying to act like it wasn't a big deal as it was is, is complete nonsense. And, you know, he surrounded himself with a lot of uh, arrogant people who, uh, you know, were just his ass kissers who told him a lot of what he wanted to hear. And then it got out of control. I mean, I, I just think that, that, you know, as they go along, they, they just need to be very careful, is all I'm saying, of letting it, you know, <clears throat> develop into some circus or being, you know, overtly uh, open to Trump, Trump, Trump. Just put it out there and let I, people I, reach well, I, their I think what you, I think what you have to avoid is looking like you were bashing them, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, they, right. I mean, look, you can continue to play the tape of him saying things and doing things. I mean, okay, because that's, I mean, look, that's fair game because he, he did it, right? It's in the public mm -hmm. record. I mean, he went somewhere and he said something or he wrote something and put it out. That's all in the record. I mean, you can use as much of that as you want, but just, just be very careful not to try to attach any much commentary to that, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, does that, am I making any sense there? You know, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they did a whole lot of that yesterday. I'm just saying that's yeah. what they need to be careful with. They need to just make sure that they don't, let it evolve so that it looks more like an episode of Rachel Maddow than it does a yeah. congressional hearing. Yeah. That's Absolutely. all I'm saying. Yep, you're right. You know, I mean, just be just be very careful with that. And, and I think that enough reasonable people 
will reach the conclusion that you or I or other people would like him to reach, and that is that he is very much at fault, as are a lot of other people, okay? But I'm just saying, a major player, and even if you don't want to say prosecute and all this other stuff, it's fine, but at least then in your mind, you would say, okay, it's over with, and he's gone, and he needs to stay gone. Now, look, there are a contingent of people in the country that I don't care what they play on there. They want him back, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, my mother, I don't care what anyone says, what anyone shows her. I don't care if Donald Trump gets on there and makes a full confession. She will suddenly find religion and say, oh, my God, he, he, was, he was a mistake, and he confessed, and I forgive him, and... Trump 2024, you know what I mean? I mean, there's going to be people yeah, but, like that. I mean, I, so those I just, minds I just, aren't going to yeah, get changed. Yeah, but, but I just don't think what kind I – mean, I hate to you know, say this about your mother. What kind of moron it takes to not see that this guy was doing something terrible to this country? Well, yeah, look, yeah. I mean – That that his yeah. job as president, above and beyond anything else, yeah. is to preserve and defend the democracy. That's the oath, you correct. Know? And I don't think he did any of those things. He tried to subvert it. Yeah. And anybody well, who yeah. can't see that is, uh, is, is I, mean, I hate to say this about your mother, a fucking moron. Well, yeah, look, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's why we don't really, look, we don't discuss it, you know? I mean, because I don't know that I really understand it. I mean, when I was uh, young, you know, my parents, we, we come from almost, you know, from nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, neither one of them finished high school and we didn't have much, but they made a life for themselves without an education, mm -hmm. without a lot of other things. And, yeah. you know, they, they were able to build some stuff up and there was such a period of time where, you know, they were uh, very good supporters of the Democratic Party and, and things like that. And Hillary Clinton for a time, my mother loved Bill Clinton and all that stuff but you know i think what happened was you know the the lacent racism that lays within uh certain parts of our country and certain parts of my family yeah. came out during the obama administration and you know they never got back to it so um you know uh where i live they have always worried about mexicans coming to take their jobs because like i said you know they that you know my my family wasn't uh, lawyers they weren't surgeons they weren't, you know, uh, engineers. Uh, you know, they were uh, laborers, and they were. You know, yeah, I'm serious. I, I'm, I don't. Look, get... That's a legitimate. That's a, okay. It's a legitimate concern to think that someone's going to come take your job and do it for less. I mean, that's a worry that Americans are allowed to have. Mm -hmm. But when it evolves into hating those people, that now, you know what I'm saying? Hey, the jobs they, the jobs they're out. taking, Josh, are the jobs nobody wants. Well, a lot of it was, you know, but I mean. You know, but look, you know, my father was an HVAC installer in New House Construction, and you know, Mexicans, me Mexican Americans moved into that business years ago, and, and you know, you know, they they will they will sleep at the house all night so that they can wake up. There. I mean, I'm serious; they will sleep in new houses and sleeping bags. Uh, with a whole crew of them uh, because their brother is the guy that is working in the house next door that's doing the drywall. I'm, you know, so look, it was a concern. I mean, you know, but I'm just saying it started like that. And then you, you know, Trump came along and he said things out loud that they had thought in their minds, you know, for a long time, but hadn't really said, mm -hmm. you know, uh, out, you know, at least not out in public. I mean, don't get me wrong. I heard it living in the home, but you know and it it just took off from there and and you know they think that they see him as a the only person that would you know say what they'd been thinking and you know the protector of everything they hold dear and and so, so on and so on and so on i'm sure everybody's got their own reasons for why they voted for him but i'm telling you a lot of people that's what it has to do with yeah you know so no matter what you say or show that is how they're they're not going to care you yeah. know but that's not that's not the country that's his 27 or 28 percent right i mean you that's his polling numbers that you saw throughout his presidency where no mm -hmm. matter what he had that 27 to 29 
occasionally you'd see it up there in that 31 32 percent range that no matter what i mean during impeachments during what you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. all those people were going to be with him it just doesn't matter those are his i could shoot someone on fifth avenue uh and you know th that's those people yeah. you know so that's a small you know it's not a small percentage but i mean it's not the that's not the country so, so those, are the, those are the people that uh Fox tries to preserve, and Fox didn't, you know, they didn't broadcast that. They kept yeah, their, right. they kept right. their tucker on, and they didn't broadcast the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I would dare to say. I mean, I haven't asked, and I'm sure as hell not going to. I would dare to say to my mother that hasn't seen, She has. She probably hasn't seen two minutes of those hearings. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing you know, is, the thing is that they're trying to preserve that twenty-seven percent or whatever plus whatever right. they get. I, I see no reason yeah. why Fox didn't run it in this respect. Let me just turn on my mic here. Uh, they ran it for that exact reason, though. Well, they, no, but what I'm saying is... percent and try and build on it. Well, what I'm saying is is that the reason why they didn't... I'm trying to turn their air conditioning down so it doesn't obliterate me. Um, the thing is that uh, Fox should have run it and, and then sure. had their guys go on and comment about it, you know? That, you know, and they put their spin on it. Say it was not a bunch of crap, you know, uh, but run it anyway. You know, don't seem like you're avoiding the news. Well, and, well exactly I'll tell you what that. I what I hate. I, I hate the Republicans. I hear these guys like uh, uh, I can't think of the names of them now. I'm so out of it tonight. Um, who just make a big case out of the fact that. Well, what good can a hearing be if there aren't any Republicans on there? Well, you were asked to join the party, and yeah. you didn't want to join. And you didn't well, want to join, too. so you would have the, the ability to gripe now, you know, yeah. about no Republicans being there. You were asked right. to the party. There was, a, there was a place at the table for you. Sure. Yeah, I mean there are two Republicans on the committee. Yeah, Those but but oh, they're, they're, but they're they're, they're they're considered traitors to the party because they went well, on the right. because yeah. they right. went on the committee. Right. You know. And the only real the only real uh, retort comments that I saw is why aren't they talking about the inflation? Why aren't they talking about gas prices? Just total diversions that I saw. Well, I mean, I've been at home all week and, and working on stuff, and I play C-SPAN in the background all the time, and I can tell you right now, they've been playing they've been playing hearings on, uh, committee hearings on the on the budget that's been proposed all week, and all the various subcommittees that have jurisdiction over certain parts of the budget, and they've been talking about the inflation all week long. Right, so, right. You know, I, was, I mean, it, it's, it's that's what I'm saying. It, it's there. It's you know those tweets are nonsense they're lies you know c-span shared c-span shared some tweets last night you know from republican members and democratic members but republican members of congress you know and some of them are just laughable you know oh yeah. I, I see they've got time to show up for their nighttime hearing but where have they been these last two years where they get to vote by proxy exactly and as someone who yeah, has exactly. c-span on all the time I can tell you right now that I have seen just as many Republicans stand up and, and, and the speaker say, uh, for what reason does the gentleman from Illinois rise? And, and uh, the gentleman from Illinois say, Mr. Speaker, uh, as the designated member for Congressman so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so, I am authorized as their designated voter to let the House know they Go vote right. yay. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it just, it, so that's, that's nonsense, you know, but that's the game. I mean, it, it, I wish that, if we could ever get away from that, you know, and get that back to it's where the it was in the, I mean, in the fifties and sixties, we could make some, some good progress. Mm -hmm. But since the late eighties, early nineties, when that sort of thing happened, uh, where you just, every single thing has to be exploited and demonized. I mean, they squeeze every last drop of blood out of every last body they can it's not healthy and it's it's that's you know that's the big problem but you know that's the where it is right now because those are the people that we have chosen so we you know we gotta try to choose better people but i mean you know those are the, the 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 sort of things that you see i mean look if you don't think there should be a hearing then go on television and if you're a member of congress and say why you don't think there should be a hearing 
and make a case for it and act like an adult. But if you want to start all this, you know, like you said, well, where's the hearings on inflation? Well, I, like I said, I've watched a dozen of them this week. You know, oh, they got time to show up for uh, nighttime hearings, but they, they couldn't show up in both the last two years. Baloney, okay? You know, the evidence is there. It's on tape. Oh, well, where's the hearing about Biden's uh, botched Afghanistan withdrawal? Oh, you mean like all those committee hearings the House and Senate Armed Services mm -hmm. Committee had uh, for six weeks after that? And the 1,400 appearances y'all made on Meet the Press and CNN this morning complaining? I mean, come on. All that was covered right mm -hmm. and it was covered from one end to the other i mean so all that is just it's just made up exploited nonsense it's it's taking something that's not an issue and trying to make <coughs> it an issue so that people will not pay attention to the real issue and the real issue is the events that the committee is presenting to you so just you know you just have to ignore it i mean i don't think that stuff is going to succeed long term with with voters i mean even if republicans uh win a majority in the in the house of representatives or in the senate you know this november it's not going to be because i think they tricked people into it with tweets like that and their game playing it's going to be because of other issues you know real issues because i don't think anyone's paying attention to to, to much of that because it's all garbage i mean it's just it's what it is it's junk so let me ask you an important question. Is there a Warriors game tonight? <laughs> yeah, it's just about over. Oh, okay. Well, then we should get some people coming on soon. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> I have a little cough here. I hope I didn't get COVID at the hospital. Uh, no. Huh? I give you my 10 cents. On <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Yeah. I, I, I look, because I listened to it the other day. Yeah. And not 100%, but maybe 80 mm percent -hmm. and every time i watched it i said you know i've already heard this once before maybe there's a little better graphics and videos and mm -hmm. that i didn't have but there was not too much that that i would call it new information for for me mm -hmm. and I, I suspect for a lot of you guys the same issue but there's a lot of people who really have never seen this stuff. And, and uh, the question is, they may never see anything or because they're not looking at it. Yeah. They don't care. Well, I don't know what anybody felt. I mean, I don't understand the popularity of, of, uh, of uh, Trump. Because I don't know what anybody sees in him. He didn't do anything for anybody. Jeez. You know, it wasn't like he made your life better as a result. You know, he turned the, the whole presidency for four straight years into a, 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 a comedy show. You know, but one which at the end you couldn't laugh any longer at. You know, it got very At the end of the day, he did exactly what Josh was saying, though. He, he said what people think. And that's what his popularity came to. That's that's what it was. Well, what was he saying that people think? Oh, just about everything he ever came out of his pie hole. I mean, there's so many people that would that were thinking the things that he would say, and that's all they did was, yeah, yeah. And then they would come out of the woodwork, and he was egging them on. Yeah. These people were sitting in the woods waiting to, to do this shit. And when he... Oh would get up there and, and, and start saying this stuff, that's when they started creeping out of the woods. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, just, that's, yeah. That's stuff all like, you know, they're, they're going to close your factory and send your job to China. They're going to uh, bring a Mexico. You know what? I'm going to stop it with an executive order. I'm not going to wait for any kind of Congress. I mean, you know, uh, uh, they can't close it up and, and send it to China, so they're just going to bring a Mexican here to do it. Um you yeah, know, we're gonna close the border and stop all that you stuff. You know, Charlottesville, a lot of fine people on both sides. I mean, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell anybody, you know, a big secret here. There are a lot of white people sitting around in America when that went down, being like, "Hey, look, Emma's ran some of them niggers over." I mean, look, I'm, I'm just giving you the facts of how some of America 
thinks you know i mean you know i'm not saying that i do or that it's right but that's you know it's not do you, uncommon do you, th- to do you hear think do you think th- like this attitude right now is exacerbated by a black president well i think that's what set some people off or or got, i don't know if set them off and i don't know if it made them angry it just made them i think it lit the fuse in different to off. you know i mean they're their status quo was changing, you know, and that's not comfortable for a lot of people. So it 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 got them to veer off their well beaten path and, you know, they got off of it and said, Oh, well, you know, maybe what these other guys have been saying isn't so bad. I've kind of felt that way and then, you know, they sleep once the toe was in the water, you know, and now they're all swimming around in it you know so i mean that's sort of how i see it based on you know anecdotal experiences around you know people that i know and and things like that i mean that's not some kind of scientific evidence or whatever but there's no doubt that trump's presidency and his campaign to the presidency is built upon uh fear okay I mean, everything that he did was about fear. I mean, when you have to have an inauguration and you have to put a line in your inauguration that says, this American carnage stops now, that that's, what is that? I mean, in an inauguration? I mean, in the midst of a civil war, Lincoln had to say, you know, let us bind up the wounds of the nation with charity for all and malice towards none, right? But Donald Trump had to say, this American carnage stops now. I mean, and a lot of folks said, "Mm -hmm, you know, preach, preach. I mean, that's, what is that? I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's not historically correct for one, but it's, it's just, it, that's, that's built on fear. That's built on the exploitation of people's innermost fears and how you can exploit them and make them think that you're going to uh, do something about it, okay? You know, you're you're going to close up the border because if you don't, you know, next Tuesday you might go into work and your boss might laugh at you and say, (laughs) I found a Guatemalan to do what you'll do for eight fucking dollars an hour. You're fired. I mean, you know, I'm just saying... There are a lot of people that get up in the morning and that's what they worry about, even though it's not going to happen, but they've got themselves convinced in their mind that it could happen. And then someone like Trump comes along and says, oh, it, it's going to happen. Uh, right? To, we've got the evidence, the drone footage of the, all the Guatemalans walking up here to take your fucking jobs, you know, and they, they shit themselves and vote for Trump. I mean, that's that's how you get to where it is i mean you might not see it Mm -hmm. in certain parts of the country you probably don't see it in new york city because i don't think in new york city people worry about that but in the midwest in iowa and all those places where there are a lot of people who do work jobs like that they do worry about stuff like that i mean it's it's a really legitimate concern and he exploited it i mean you know, I, I don't know. We could probably sit around and think of some issues, but if, if the Republicans had rejected him, he would have found Democratic issues that were just as exploitable and probably ran on that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, you know, but it's just, you know, and look, they masterfully uh, managed to finally, you know, really super duper exploit the, the, uh, the religion and the Christian conservative and the court issue. I mean, you know, they played out for all it was worth. I mean, he got a lot of votes based just on that in itself. You know, there is a large contingent of the country, especially in the in the in the South and in the Midwest, that uh, will sell whatever they need. They'll sell their soul for a judge that will do what they think is right when it comes to guns or abortion. I mean, you know, they, they will let you do almost anything you want. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, for all the crying and moaning and groaning about mm-hmm. Bill Clinton in the 90s and all his moral failures, if he'd have just went on television and said, next Supreme Court justice that kicks it, I'm going to find, you know, uh, 
William Rehnquist is fucking cloned and appointed to the Supreme Court. They'd all been like, oh, what the? It was just one blowjob. It wasn't, I mean, he's a weak man. It's okay. I mean, you know, it would have just, they would have suddenly had fucking amnesia when it came to all that. I mean, I, I know they would have because I've seen it. I mean, so, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've sat in churches where people said, Oh my, I just do not understand how this country can trust a man who can't even run his own household, his own marriage. He can't even keep his fly zip with the nuclear launch codes. And fast forward, not 15, and who did you elect? Uh, I mean, uh, they all voted for Trump. I mean, it's hypocrisy at its finest. Oh, yeah. They but excuse that's Trump. That's the American they, way. They, they excuse, they, the way they excuse Trump's a pussy remark you know any Locker other person any other person would have uh, just been out of the race immediately with something like that uh, at one you time know? yeah yeah what happened to uh, what happened to uh, Alan hmm. he was on the phone I think he had to go oh okay yeah, yeah but you know that's I mean they're I mean, you know, they'll sell themselves out for whatever to get something that they want. I mean, it's, it's, you know, which in a lot of ways is sort of an American tradition. People will a lot of times give up their principles to get something that they want because they say, you know, where does principles ever get you and stuff like that. And I get it. It's hard to not take that temptation a lot of times. But look, I mean, that's that's what happened i mean that's i mean we know how trump got there i think it was all that kind of stuff but what really helped him get there was you know that the media really helped that along because he would say those things mm -hmm. um that people that we've just discussed and those things were different than what most people had been saying for quite a long time and because of that they were controversial or uh, exploitive or whatever and then be, the media would play them over and over and over again and talk about them and talk about them and talk about them and all those people got to see it over and over again and mm -hmm. they got it in their mind I mean he probably could have got elected president and damn near not spent a dollar you know I mean uh, CNN and, and, and MSNBC gave him just as much free airtime as Fox News did you know I mean, for as much as they're uh, on to it now, I, I still remember in uh, early 2016 or whatever, him sitting on the stool at Morning Joe when they were out somewhere and Mika's face was like, oh, okay, okay. you know, and now uh, she's like, oh, what did I do? You know, <laughs> they're a Johnny come lately on Donald Trump, but, you know, I guess at least they showed up to the party. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, they used to pal around with him years ago and shit like that. Yeah, you no, know, and and they had him on the fucking morning Joe every chance they got until he started acting like a real complete jackass, and then they woke up. But by then, it was too late. Well, you know, I mean, I've said this before, and I'll say it again: the people who made Trump president was MSNBC, more than Fox ever did. They you did know. their part. You know, every day. He was the subject matter for four years and for a year prior to that when he was running for president. They gave him the more free publicity than he could possibly have ever gotten by buying advertising, which he didn't have to do. It was the cheapest campaign ever run. Yeah, probably. You know, and he got up every morning and said, what can I say that's so ridiculous MSNBC is going to be talking about it all day? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's you know, hard. I mean, look, at the end of the day, people voted for him. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they like it, we just talked about, they did so because they had some, you know, deep down different things that he brought to the surface and they, they voted for him. But mm -hmm. the media certainly helped ferment that process you know yeah. i mean you know so i'm not going to blame the media i mean people voted for him. that's what americans chose to do but mm -hmm. it, it is it is uh certainly evident that they had 
uh, they did their part to help it along. Hello. And probably made money in the process. Hello there, John Larkin. Yeah, I was going to add, uh, if uh, if Trump gets busted and gets thrown in jail, MSNBC is going to go out of business. Oh. We'll have nothing to talk about anymore. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I'll tell you something. I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, I don't know that he's going to see any time in jail for this. I think he is. I got bets that he is. Well, you're probably going to lose some money. I don't know. Well, it, the bet is either he goes to jail first or he becomes president again. <laughs> well, I don't think he's going to become president again. I don't so think the Republican. Happens, I don't think the Republican push. Party is going to let that happen. But right <laughs> now, they're in his corner because they got midterms to win. You know, but come uh, come uh, the presidential race, presidential time, I don't know that he's going to get, he's going to win the primaries. You know? Maybe not. Uh, they, they took some, some information, uh, some, some polls that were taken that said DeSantis could beat him to get the yeah. nomination. You know, which that's even sadder, okay? You know? Went from the from the from the pot to the frying pan. Don't yeah. forget, he he lost the House, the Senate, and the presidency in his term. And how they can bet on another doing that shit again—that's crazy. Well, you know, he has too much baggage. Yep. Uh, so, uh, but I I think more substantially, what should come out of the hearings, mm -hmm. I guess, to move on from Trump, is. They, they, the one thing that they do need to figure out is why, regardless of who the crowd was or who started it, who let it on, doesn't matter. Okay, if whoever showed up, why they were allowed to do what they did? How was our capital allowed to be breached and controlled by? you know uh a group of people for as long as it was with no counter assault or no way to stop i mean that to me is the more important yeah. question okay because really? that's what bothers me you know because i remember when it happened live telling my wife I've just always assumed that somewhere nearby there had to be since 9-11 there had to be a counter assault team that would take care of this kind of stuff but one never came so I have to wonder if there either wasn't one which I have no idea how one cannot exist after 9-11 happened or if there really was one and the military said well there is one but we can't use it for this because they're not actually in there shooting up the congressman and all that we can't use it for this because if we do it's an open look for the real terrorists i'm mm -hmm. not saying they were i'm just saying okay for the real terrorists and the next al-qaeda or whatever who really do try to pull this stunt and now they're going to have seen our playbook they're going to know exactly how long it takes to get there they're going to know what we show up in they're going to know where we came from and we we we, we can't use it for this dc police is going to have to hold it off until we activate the guard and we get them there and all that. I, I don't know. I'm just saying, I, I just remember thinking, I, I don't understand how something like that can happen. And there wasn't already okay. a team that was always ready to go 24 hours a day, seven days a week from like uh, a joint base Andrews or, or Fort like Belvere, which is right down at Mount Vernon, all of which are 10 minute helicopter rides away. And how there wasn't someone there in 20 minutes with 60 guys <laughs> already ready to go and then another 60 are showing up in five more minutes and another whatever i mean i i've never understood that well i thought that there was one and that the president had to activate it and he never did and that maybe we'll find that out well uh, yeah I don't, I don't know you know so i don't I, i've just always wondered if there either really wasn't one which i just can't fathom or if there was and someone said we, we, we can't we can't use it for this because yeah. you know if, uh, reason, if a couple hundred a... terrorists ever show up at the same word they're going to know exactly what to do. yeah because that makes sense when I thought that there was some kind of a, a um, 
I don't know if it was a military response, but it was a sub-military response that could could be activated behind the DC uh, police that could have been activated. And, and I heard small bits of it right after, but yeah. they never were, and it had to be activated by the pol- by the by the president, I believe, and it never happened. And then by the time it could have been, he you know told everybody that they he loved them and to go home yeah no because i've still been of the mindset that, that that you know outside of the building I, I sort of could have given some leeway some okay but i've always been of the mindset that once they came inside the building but i'm sorry but I, I'll, I i'm completely fine with whatever happened after that happened. i mean i i don't care if they just shot 50 people. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. When you think, bashed in the windows I, I, and, and I came in, that, I, that's it. I think they should have picked a few of those people off as they were just, you know, when they. No. I mean, I'm willing I, to I mean, lay down. They said right there, shots, I'm willing to lay down. Like I mean, if, you know, you've, you've forcibly entered the U.S. Capitol building. Government <laughs> sorry, property. But, There's enough sign I mean, that's. <laughs> You know, so shots, I mean, they scattered like rats. But I'm, I'm, I'm actually more interested in that part, I guess, than I am the political part. You know, um, the Trump part. Because I mean, look, I mean, Trump, you know, uh, stirred stirred it all up. But I'm just saying, how that they were able to make their way there and enter and occupy um i find you know i mean we allow people to do that that's what i'm saying you know like in when this happens at an embassy somewhere else it's a huge deal right they were fine with having benghazi hearings or they're fine with having hearings that how did they get into the embassy in you know saigon or how did they get into the embassy in, in tehran or whatever i mean when they were able to breach the building and and at one end of the building run down the American flag and run up their own, we, we can't let that happen in an embassy. And the times that it has happened, it has been an incredible embarrassment. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I find that the most shameful part, personally, of the entire ordeal. And right. that's yeah. the part that I would like to know. And the Trump flag was about to go up. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't... You know, I mean, I'm just saying it's a, it's a it's a relatively, you know, known uh, tradition of honor that if we lose an embassy, someone has to do everything they can to take the flag. I mean, I, I know that sounds stupid, but I look, I believe that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, you 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 can't let that happen. And I mean, to let that happen in the Capitol, I I just I mean, I don't know. I I, I can't believe it. I mean, well, I mean. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand how there was no counter assault. I mean, because what if it had been the White House? Okay, maybe it wasn't Trump. Maybe it was over different stuff. Maybe it was our people, and they went to kill Trump. You know, I'm just saying, could could that many people get in the White House? I mean, what would they have done? Would they have fucking machine gunned him down then? Right? I mean, but so but there was a couple thousand of them, and there how many people can they have at the White House? Well, I don't know. But I'm sure they've got something stashed away that comes out in that event. Why didn't they send those guys down there? I, I mean, you know, I mean, well, you know, I got, I got to tell saying. you something. Let me, let me just jump in here now. Uh, uh, what went on there was something in which we weren't prepared to take care of it, because when you talk about the the Capitol Police, when's the last time any of them had to pull a gun? Yeah, right. Exactly. You right. know, they never were trained for that. No, no, you know, no way. And I think the way they reacted to it was admirable. Yeah. You know? I mean, well, put, yeah, but there should be some kind of a backup plan that, you know, especially after something like 9 11 has happened. They've covered everything else. They've covered every building in downtown. They should be covering at least that building. Well, if you, as soon as you saw all those people walking down towards the Capitol, there should have been, the been police there. You know? yeah. 
There should have been police right. ready yeah. anyway yeah. because the National we sh Guard. They should have had the National Guard out there. They probably didn't <laughs> feel that a president of the United States would egg on a mob to attack the Capitol building. I I just don't think they thought of that as a possibility. Yeah, but I, I but I guess my point is is that part is fine. Like even if I conceded that argument, I'm just saying. How is there no plan so that just on a random Tuesday afternoon in May, yeah. 500 Al-Qaeda members all decide to descend on Washington, D.C. together and just go into the Capitol and kill every fucking, I mean, the Senate and the House are in session. They're all there in the office buildings that are connected by time and just decide to just go fucking crazy. And there was no counter. I mean, what would happen if that happened? Yeah, like we, on that we particular don't want to put day, offenses. no one's expecting any violence. Nothing's going on big. It's just a regular day, just like September 11th was, right? Just a regular fucking day. And then all of a sudden, something started. So there was no team that, if that started happening, you know, that the DC police's job is to basically engage in a shootout for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever the number is. It can't be much longer than that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your job. Your job is to engage fire and maneuver fire and maneuver for 10 or 15 minutes and at that point that's when the next phase that you don't know about it's top secret but we're just telling you that's the number they're going to be here at that point or before but did we not have that i mean i, I just can't believe that because well, if that's the case al-qaeda should have that's what they should have done but galvin was, was to testified last night said that herself she wasn't trained for that right and, yeah. and and probably she wasn't trained for that because nobody considered that a possibility. Right, right. It's an open it's an open building. It's a, and that's the way it should be. But you got to have some kind of a you know a plan. Well, part of the way you protect an open building like that is by expecting even the most extreme circumstances, sure. which you never count on, but be ready for that. You know. Yeah. But you know, who, yeah, the White you House know, we used never, to be an open building never, too, but they've been bad, fortifying that for years. We've had a lot of bad presidents <laughs> in my time, but none of them at any point would have ever thought about trying to subvert the democracy. Right. You know? Yeah. And and that's what this president did. And not I out of any kind of ideological feelings. It was out of his own personal greed to stay president. Right. You know, and who knows what would have happened if he got elected to another four years? What would he do at the end of those four years? Try and find some way that he could get the power forever? Hey, they did it in Russia. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, I, you know, I saw some new stories today about some of the stuff that you're going to hear about at the next hearing on Monday is about they were scrambling on January 6th and 7th to try to find what legal powers he had to you know, seize voting machines and replace them with other ones and rerun the election. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After January the 6th, he still wanted to, ha he wanted us to all go back to the polls and vote again. And redo. I want to redo. I mean, but it's, that's, it's nonsense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, did it's, you, they, you know. Uh, did you hear they found the leaker of the Supreme Court decision? They did? Yeah. It was Kavanaugh. He he let he went he went out for a few drinks after work. Left his bar, his briefcase in a bar. Oh, really? Yeah. He likes beer. Yeah. No. He likes beer. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <sighs> Wouldn't that be a great story though? <laughs> oh Lord. Boy, I hope I'm not coming down with COVID here. I I was in that hospital room that emergency room for 12 hours and uh i had the mask on the whole time my mask was on you know so i mean can you still get it even though you got a mask on mm -hmm. you shot a lysol when you got home did you drink some lysol uh, yeah i tried okay I tried, but now did I'm you do a probably. test huh did you do a test no i haven't done a test because my nose hasn't started dripping till just now uh, uh. Yeah, I, I got some kind of a cold going on right now, so that's why I did a test last night. Yeah, but well, I, uh, it's negative. But well, I think yeah, I'm cold. lightheaded tonight. But you know, I mean, it could be that I'm not. I don't think I have it. But you know, I wore masks for the whole time there. 
So you can still get it. The mask going. Well, thank you very much. That makes me feel real good, <laughs> Alan. Sorry. That makes me feel Warriors real good. Won. And you know what you got to stop doing on this show, please? Don't give out medical advice <laughs> on any level because you're not a doctor. And I, so, I find I that that's. I don't uh, pretend to be. I just. Well, but well, no, no, you do. Me. You do pretend to be. You know, no, I, don't. I mean, you got a guy on the show after who's calling you a doc all the time. What are people supposed to think? Let them think what they want. I'm not a doctor. Well, but then don't I, give medical advice. I know advice. a lot about medicine. Well, then you shouldn't give medical advice. What I'm saying is because I did, that's just one of the things I've always been sensitive about. Okay. That, that I don't want medical advice to be given out on a show that I do by somebody other than a doctor. You know. And then even okay. sometimes I say, not even that doctor, you know, because what the fuck does he know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Well, people are very impressionable, because look at what Trump said with the bleach. I mean, they, some people will just listen to anything. Well, they did try the bleach. Some people did try bleach. Yeah, in Phoenix or in Vegas. Remember that? I was like, look, people are very impressionable. Yeah. 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 People are very stupid. I think that's the word you really should be looking for. I want to say that, yeah. Let's not let's not deny the stupidness of human beings in this country. What's with your lights uh, there? Do you not have any lights on at all? Oh, it's, yeah, uh, it's the TV. The TV. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it oh like because it's, it's yeah. kind of like I'm watching a movie of you or something. TV is in the background and it keeps on, you know. Yeah. They should turn on the it's light. Nice, yeah. Probably. I, I, it's too hot. Too hot for lights. Boy, oh boy, Don't you have air conditioning? Today. Oh, fuck no. In the tenderloin? I, You're in a good mood today, Alex. Boy, pick on me. Pick on John. No, pick no. On everybody. I'm not picking on in, him. In the tenderloin? Hell no. We got open windows. That's about it. Really? No why Why not a air conditioner in the a, a tenderloin? Because it's an old building, you know, it's just an old crappy Yeah, but you building. can put in, you know, wall air conditioners, you know. Oh, you mean like a little, yeah, what are they like called? Like I got here. I don't, have any, I don't have any central air conditioning in this apartment. You mean like a little Dyson thing? Uh, not a Dyson thing. I've got like a big giant 1200 BTU behemoth. Wow. Uh, you know, well, know, LG. And you just put it in the window and hope it doesn't fall out. Remember swamp, swamp, like swamp cooler? Yes. Yeah, swamp, no, swamp no, swamp coolers. Swamp coolers are um, you pour water into a swamp cooler. Right. Yeah. And then it keeps you cool for a while. Yeah. yeah. You know. Can we talk? Can I talk about uh, mechanical things? Yeah. Sure. Sure. So it's not twelve hundred BTUs that wouldn't cool anything. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. There yes. you go. Yeah. I gotta make sure I'm not gonna upset you by saying something. Well, I went up BTUs because I I decided I just wanted a little more cool for my money, you know. And we well, leave, yeah, you know, huh? In San Francisco, you only need an air conditioner like maybe three days the whole year, you know. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, it, it was like nice, it was nice today. today. Yeah. Muggy, Ooh. it was muggy last weekend in San Francisco. You turn the air conditioner on take the moisture out of the air. Now what happens, here's what I always wonder. A anybody here had a humidifier? Oh, my mother did, yeah. Uh, okay. I had a humidor. Well, wait a minute. And <laughs> how many here have had a dehumidifier? She did that too. <laughs> okay, yeah. so now what would happen if you put a humidifier and a dehumidifier in the same room? And she had a fan going too at the same time. Yeah, but what, what would happen true? if you had both those going? Wouldn't the dehumidifier uh, make it not worth having the humidifier for? It'd be uh, a waste yeah. of energy. It would be a waste of energy, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, but I could sure use a dehumidifier in here as well <laughs> as, you know. But, but usually an air conditioner takes care of that, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when it gets hot by me now, Alex, me and my brother, we never even open the windows. I just keep the air on low and I close the blinds. Because once you open up, you get the hot air in. I can't, I can't take it. It's all stuffy. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, yeah. you try to air the house out a little bit when it's cool. That's what I do. Like, if it's cool out, one day I'll open the window just to air it out. So how long has it been since your mother passed? We, well, we like to say she's no longer with us, but over a year. Me and my sister were talking about it. We were walking. Yeah, through. I'm beginning to think it was... Two, over two years. Over no, no, a little over a year. She was gone. Uh, I think it was January seventh. Would have been a year. 
Yeah. But it was over a year, January. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. Today was my father's right? birthday, so we walked to the cemetery. He would have been 85. But you've handled it pretty well, you know? Yeah, you know what? We thought about it, and you know what? You miss her, but it's like, you know what? It was just fate. What bothered me, I think, in the beginning was she died right, she got COVID right before, a couple of weeks before the vaccine. And it was just dumb luck. My sister was beating herself up because she caught her from probably school. It was just fake. I was kind of annoyed because when I was getting the vaccine, it was like she was so close to getting it. Well, here's, here's the thing that I, that I got that hit me today. Our friend Shecky was going to go to Europe. And the reason he didn't go to Europe is because he had to take a COVID test in order to get back into the United States. And he didn't want to worry for his whole, va whole vacation that he wouldn't pass it. Right? Well, what did they say today, folks? Sunday, they're stopping it. They're stopping it. Yeah, I, I guess I guess it didn't do much, to be honest with you. You know. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. Uh, at that hospital, I hate, when, I hate when somebody asks a, a question, and then somebody answers it. They don't like the answer. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't get what you said. Can you still get COVID with a mask? Alan says yes. You say that's all I need. <laughs> and then you go into don't don't talk about medical stuff. I mean, I'm, you know, my, my it my is. Brain... You, I hear you make medical statements all the time, and and I'm just trying to stop you from doing it because it it okay. I, I I don't think it's a res makes for a responsible broadcast. Okay, you know, I know that you know a lot about that stuff. Okay, I'm not denying that, but but you're not a doctor, and and I oh. I used to do the I used to close people down. In all the other shows I did on all the other radio stations, when they would ever go on and start giving medical advice. Now you know why nobody's here. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm Remember just... the time you you, you told all that right. to me. I'll try to watch it. If I say something medical, slap me. Yeah. Well, it's just all that doc stuff over at Jack Show that kind of gets to me. But because then when you do say something about medicine, people think, oh, he's a doctor. He must know. Okay, you know? call me a doctor then. <laughs> you can get a yeah. doctor. Oh, why? I, I, do you need one? Call me a doctor. I think I need one. Thank you very much. Dr. Bennett, yeah. Um, call you doctor. I remember that time you got in a fight with that lady on Current Affairs because you said it's not really journalism, and she got all pissed off. Really? Was, uh, really? Yeah, either. back in the Live 105 days. God, I can't and, remember that. Tell you the truth. Yeah, I forgot her name, but radio she, station in San Francisco, Alex, like 105. Yeah, by the way, I want to yell at Matt Sheridan, who on the chat wrote, I think MSNBC turned down Alex for a job. That's why he has such a beef with them. <laughs> no, it's never. On everybody day. Huh? As a matter of fact, I was on MSNBC for quite a while yeah. uh, with, you ready for this, Tucker Carlson. Yeah, wow. Every mm -hmm. every Friday, I was on with Tucker Carlson. Yeah. On a show? Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, no, MSNBC doesn't run shows. <laughs> yes. Well, I, a show. I mean, yeah, I was thinking like a so, like a. So do you think thing, you yeah. influenced him to be this idiot? No. 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 <laughs> he was the idiot before you came along. Oh yeah, no question about it. Hey, that's it for tonight. I hope I don't have COVID. Uh, you think I have COVID? You wanna? Nah, I don't I don't think so. Oh, okay. That's just an opinion. Oh, I don't want to be a doctor yet. Yeah. I, don't, mm. I don't want to be a doctor. Anyway, hey, hey listen. That's for 12 bucks at Walgreens. That's it for tonight, They're boy. Free. What a weird week this has been for me. Uh, 12, 13 hours in an emergency room. You, you, you'll be fine next. Oh, I can't give medical advice. No, you'll, no, be okay. you'll be fine next week. Just, I, you know, I'm not trying to get on your case. I'm just trying to tell you that I don't like to have medical advice given on my show, other than by a doctor. We gotta get, a, gotta get a doctor. I'm the closest thing you're gonna find on the show to a doctor. Yeah, yeah. What would you, you want? Phil's medical advice? Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. Hey, anyway, That's thanks. All right. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks to uh, to uh, Josh for all your expert advice today. A big thank you to Kevin for being here once again and for uh, for Tony to drop by and of course John Larkin there in the in the tenderloin of San Francisco and of course uh, 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 our, our good friend uh, 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 Alan oh man I'm out of it well we'll see you again uh, on uh, t Monday at uh, oh Monday oh yeah I'll be there 
No, I won't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> don't you don't you dare. I, I won't. I won't. Okay, everybody give, give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye uh, at you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, everybody. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Let me push this. And there I am. Okay, there they go. Uh, they're all uh, all fine folks. And we appreciate their participation. And they're caring about this program enough to do it. Anyway, that's it for now. Stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next. I'll see you Monday uh, for the pop-up on Facebook at 4 o'clock. And then we'll see you again on uh, Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs>